Hello, 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 everyone. Let's see, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Welcome and come on in the room. I just need to check to make sure everything is lined up here. Welcome. Hello, 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 everyone. Come on in the room, come on in the room. And as you join us, please do me a favor and share this video out. I just need to make sure that we are live. So just give me a minute to make sure everything is lined up here and then I will get us started. So give me a minute, okay? Everybody else can see it, but I can't see it. Okay, let's see, there we go. Come on in the room. Let's see, let me share to a couple of groups here. Let's get it on here to Ball Life. Here we go. Welcome everyone. I am so excited, so excited. Please share this out. We want to get a lot of people on here to hear this amazing interview, to have a conversation and to talk and to just hang out. So guys, please, as you join us, for some reason, where? I don't even see it on my page. That's okay. Can you can see it? Okay. okay. Let me share it on my, um, I'm going to share it on the uh, alopecia page. So you guys give me a minute. One more place. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All this little technical stuff. Okay, here we go. Boom, there we are. Over here to my, my little spot. And for, do you see it on my wall, Kendra? I do. I'm actually on it and I'm watching the comments and I've done a watch party on my side. I don't even want to I didn't see it on my wall. Hey, everybody. You know, this technical stuff, I mean, I do not see it. I don't see it, but that's okay. You said, you see the comments and everything? I do. That's interesting. I don't know why, but I'm just going to go over here to the Ball Life page. Y'all, forgive me, but I'm coming and I'm going to get my life together. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm going to get it together. I don't even see it, but I'm going to look here on the Bot Life page and uh, watch it from there. Thank you guys so much for, um, there we go. Thank you guys so much for joining us on tonight. I'm so excited and honored. Welcome to Bot Life Magazine, Living a Bald Life. We are here again. We do this interview. We have the interview actually every week, sometimes two times a week. And we're just excited. This is, um, let me let me back up. First of all, let me tell you guys who I am. My name is Jamie Elmore. I am the editor and chief of Bald Life Magazine. I am your alopecia confidence coach. And for my babies, I am their alopecia auntie. And so I'm just totally excited and honored to be here on tonight. We do this show every Friday at six o'clock PM Pacific Standard Time. And the way that it's growing, it's starting to grow, which is so amazing. We are starting to have at least two um, interviews a week, usually on a Friday and Saturday or a Friday and a Sunday. So that's just exciting, exciting news. But let me tell you guys a little bit about Ball Life Magazine. Ball Life Magazine is a platform for men, women, and children that are bald due to alopecia, cancer, or medically induced, or simply by choice. This platform is for them to share their stories, for them to stand in their truth, and for them to have the opportunity to rock their crown, unapologetically to rock their crown. This is a safe space for them. This is a community for 
the hair loss community, actually, for anybody dealing with hair loss. And so I'm just um, excited to be on the forefront to have a, uh, a platform that is designed and for us, a safe space for us. And so I'm just excited and honored for that. But I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about alopecia, give you some backdrop um, on it. So alopecia is a autoimmune disease. It's where your immune system attacks your hair follicle. Um, there are basically, let me back up a little bit. Basically what happens with alopecia is your body cannot recognize your hair. Your, your body, uh, your immune system is like, what is this? It's like a foreign invader. Can you imagine your body not recognizing something that is supposed to be there? So that's how alopecia happens for people that has it. It's just your immune system can't recognize your hair. And so your hair falls out. There are 6.8 million people in the US and 147 million people worldwide that have this disease. Now, alopecia is not contagious, so you don't have to worry about catching anything by standing next to someone who has it. But I tell people all the time that alopecia is, um, it doesn't discriminate. Basically, it can happen to anybody at any time for any reason. Um, alopecia is rude. It just shows up out of nowhere. And there's different types, excuse me, different types of alopecia. There's alopecia, um, areata, where you get the bald spots. Um, and then there's alopecia um, totalis, where you just lose hair on your head. And then there's alopecia universalis. And that is where I am. Basically, I have no hair. No hair on my body. Um, I lost my nose hairs. And if you guys will probably notice that I'll be sniffing a little bit and I have to remind myself, um, it just happens. Because you know, I don't have any nose hair. So it can just, all of a sudden, my nose will start running and you know, I have to sniff or wipe my nose. But um, I have no nose hairs, eyelashes, no eyebrows or anything. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's just a, an interesting disease, but I'm excited to have my sister, my girlfriend on with us on tonight. So honored and I don't take it lightly. I tell people all the time that our stories are not our stories. Our stories are for someone else. And anytime you have an opportunity to talk about your life experiences, to share your story, to talk about how you have overcome something, or just talk about your journey, what happens is there's healing that takes place. Healing takes place in your life, and it takes place in the person who hears your story. And so tonight, I'm excited to hear from my sister, Kendra, how are you on tonight, sis? Oh, I'm fantastic. I am great. Honored to be here and a pleasure. I'm so excited. Um, I just want to jump right in so we can just get started with this conversation. So tell tell us um, about how old were you when you first noticed um, you had bald spots in your head? So I noticed it when I was about maybe six or seven. And I remember getting a relaxer and I always wondered why my ponytails were pulled down almost over my ears. And that's about the time that I could remember that, okay, that doesn't look right. There's a whole spot. And I think the younger I was, the bigger the spot was. Because I think as I got older now, it was, when I was younger, it was my whole temple. So they would always pull my ponytails down closer to my ears. And I noticed that on a lot of my pictures, I have a picture floating on my Facebook that it's me and my sisters. Actually, it's myself, my sister, and my cousin who all have that same ball spot in the same area. And we all have our little ponytails kind of dragged down to the bottom. And so that's when I paid attention to it and kind of noticed it once I got to, you know, elementary, middle school. It was like, okay, I, I see this and it's not like everybody else's. Oh, wow. So it started at a young age and you said that you have family members that have it. Now, has their um, ball spots progressed or is it still like in the same area? Yes. My cousin, she in, passed away, unfortunately, but hers was even worse. Hers was more so above the temple coming up toward the crown. So she only had enough hair here to hide Whereas when I got to high school, I just had it on this side and I intentionally didn't shave my head this week so you guys could kind of see. And so 
I just had it in this area where my sister has it in a different area as well, but hers is over time has progressed as well. And since I've gotten older, mine's got a little smaller because it was the whole temple and now it's just these two spot areas. Okay, that's that's good that it hasn't um, gotten any worse. Gotten worse. Yes. yes. That's really good. Now, how did you handle it in school? I mean, was it... Um, were you able to navigate? Did the kids notice? Did you get deal with any bullying at all? I hid it too well because back then it was like ponytails and gel was the style to wear when I was in high school. So I'd part it here, part it there, slick it back, and nobody really ever paid attention to it. I know it when my hair got loose or if it was time to go, you know, I was on the dance team and I would get nervous when I would sweat because gel tends to move once you sweat and I tend to sweat in my head so I used to get nervous I pray for the cold days that we had uh outside and I'll cry for the rainy days because <laughs> I knew my spots would be revealed so did any of your friends ever notice at all did anybody say anything to you not that I can remember I think I had a couple of friends that if I spend a night at their house they kind of knew it but nobody really, you know, I was more of the jokester in high school. So I would make fun of myself before you had a chance to make fun of me kind of thing. So I don't think anybody, never that I can remember brought it up to my attention. Mm. I know I got more of it when I got older. People started to notice like, hey, I can see the way that you cut your hair when I wore a pixie cut. It was how it was shaved or how I would comb it down. And it depend on who cut it. I had one stylist in particular, she knew how to hide the ball spots really good. But then if you get somebody who cuts your hair, no, don't, they don't know how to hide it. It's like your whole brain is exposed. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so, so did it, did this um, affect your self-esteem at all growing, you know, growing up through high school and then once you became an adult, did you feel like um, your femininity had been stolen or did you feel less of a woman? Not really. It more so affected me once I got grown that I wanted to hide it. Then It was easier to hide it as a kid, but it, it seemed like the older I got and I wanted to evolve, evolve into, I wanted to wear different hairstyles. And I noticed I couldn't wear certain hairstyles that other people could wear. I couldn't pull my hair up into a high bun without putting a bang to hide the ball spots. Or if I got braids, they had to always go down. I could never do an updo or any kind of hairstyle like that. So I more so kind of felt a little self-esteem issues once I got older. Mm. Now, did you ever, was you ever, I'm not going to say jealous, but did you feel some kind of way toward other women that have, that have the ability to wear all these different styles that you could not wear? No, because I kind of got accustomed to hiding it. Mm. That's just like um, when I see baldies that wear wigs, they, they're not ready to come out yet. And I was, I, I wasn't ready to show it, but I was more so accustomed to hiding it, mm. if that made any sense. Yeah, it does make a sense. It does make sense. And you know, one thing that I tell my ladies all the time, I said, we don't wear wigs, we accessorize. Okay. <laughs> Everything's an accessory, girl. These earrings, this necklace, yes. these eyelashes, you know, yes. that's one thing that quote unquote baldies can do. We can right. look and we can do whatever we want to do. We can wear the head wraps, hats, or what have you. We can do whatever we want. We have more options. I would say. So did you, did you ever wear wigs at all? I mean, I've worn. Yeah, I'm one with, oh yeah, I used to wear a mommy wig. <laughs> oh, you did? I used to wear a mommy wig. Because when I first faded my hair, I've always told people I wore a fade before a fade was even famous. Now it's like, it's something to do. And I was, I lost my daughter in 2009. So mm -hmm. a little bit after that, yeah, I shaved my hair. So uh, I started cutting it little by little. I got a pixie cut, got pencil curls. And then I was like, okay, let's, we could, we could do a fade. And I wore the fade, and it's just so funny. I wore the fade with the with my ball spots out, but I used to spray it with the dark spray. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yes. That's the and so one day somebody was like, what is that on your head? <laughs> and they could tell. Your secret. Yeah. 
because it looked like chalk then. Oh, now yes. it's real fancy now. They have the little fibers. You can't tell. But back mm -hmm. then, oh my God. And so one day I just said, you know what? Forget it. So I went lighter instead of having darker hair. I went lighter because when your hair is lighter, you can't really tell the ball spots. So I started to play with that too for a little while. That's amazing. I mean, the things that we do as women. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can do you can do so much. Now, did you right. notice just on your journey um, a difference with your hair as far as um, your hair falling out, or if, did you notice bald spots where there weren't any bald spots? Um, if your life, if you went through any life changes, you know, as far as um, if you were under stress, um, under any kind of pressure, did you notice a change in your hair? Talk to us about that. I noticed that the biggest change is when I lost my daughter mm. and that's when I felt like my spot before I cut my hair off, I felt like the spot was more so visible. It almost put me back into that middle school age where it seemed like it was way bigger and it, it was more exposed. And then I just finally got to the point where I said, okay, I can, I can cut it off. I, I just went to a fade. And at that time, I kind of kind of was trying to figure out how to camouflage it without wearing that spray anymore. Mm. Wow, I'm sorry to hear about your daughter. Thank yeah. you. About her. So what, what made you decide to just cut it all off? So this year, I ended up getting into um, Total Light Changes, which is the detox product that I started. And I originally did it to just come back in with the product. We have a product called Hair, Skin, and Nails. And I noticed I had been taking one of our multivitamins, which is Nutriverse, it's a liquid vitamin. And I noticed my hair start to come in. I never had any peach fuzz. I never had anything like that. And I noticed I started to get a peach fuzz and it started to come in gray. <laughs> oh, you didn't like the gray? Uh -uh. <laughs> no, I wanted to you know, kind of go with it. And I kept my fade and I would always get different kind of designs and I wore a high fade. So every week I was getting a haircut to camouflage where my thin spots are. And everybody was like, I don't see what you're talking about. When you go through alopecia or you have anything similar to it, you notice these spots for anybody else does. Mm -hmm. And so I would notice it. So literally every week I was going to get a haircut mm -hmm. and quarantine hit. And I started with the products and I just got in the mirror. I had a little fro and I just, I just cut it. And my daughter was standing next to me and I said, Hey, I need your help. She's like, what are you going to do? I'm going to cut this hair out. And I shaved it all off and I felt so free. I felt liberated. I, it was like a weight was almost free from my scalp, from my body, from my heart, from my soul. I just felt so excited. So about two weeks later, I used the products and I saw that my hair came back and I was like, you know what? We're going to do it again. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to do it again. And wow. I now I, I just don't have the desire to have any hair. And again, I can grow hair. So I'm not at a stage where I know where well, I've gotten into the baldy movement that there are women who can't grow hair back or hair won't Me. grow back. And mm -hmm. so there's a big difference when you, you can't grow hair and you're choosing to be bald. So I get the side out that people are, are you sick? Do you have cancer? Are you going through a midlife crisis? No, I found a beauty in me that was bigger than my hair mm. or bigger than wearing a wig or anything like that or accessorizing with those uh, <laughs> products. And I found a, a natural beauty in myself that I am completely in love with. And I love being bald. Mm, that's, that's awesome. That's amazing. You know, you touched on something. You said with choice, basically, there's a difference between having no control, right. losing your hair, but having a choice. You know, when you can have a choice mm -hmm. to shave it off, knowing that it's going to grow back. So right. there's a different... Um, there's different emotions that go along with that. It's a different journey when you know that, like, like myself, I know the only way my hair is going to grow back is God is going to be a touch from God. 
You know what I'm saying? It's going to yeah. be a touch from God. And he's going to say, you know what, Jamie, it's time for your hair to go back. Right. But then, like, like yourself, you choose to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Because like you said, you found a beauty in yourself. You realized that you're beautiful with or without hair. And you Absolutely. felt empowered. Absolutely. And it was so crazy. My um, That's what my daughter said. You got to keep doing this. Because even when I first cut my hair, uh, when I had my fade, my kids were like, my daughter, she's, uh, I'll be soon to be 15. And she was kind of like, mom, I don't kind of want you to go to the school. Now that's something I, I had to get her out of because I think my kids were more so embarrassed. Like people are going to make fun of you, mom. I said, I don't care. I, I, me and my daughter go back and forth with not letting people's opinion of you matter to you. My, no, no, but I get this all the time. I have, I'm a school bus driver. So kids come in and the first thing they look at me is like, what's wrong with the bus driver? Why do you not have hair? I probably scared all my coworkers when I first walked into the job. Like, okay, we knew she was a little thrown off, but this lady is completely (laughs) insane right now. But I, I love how I feel. I have no shame in my bald head. I've, I've now found the new love of fedora hats as my accessory. But I refuse to put any hair back on top of my head. I know that's right. You rocking it's your you crown, know. sis. Okay. <laughs> I know that's right. Wow. But you know, and like you said, educating your your daughter, helping her understand that um, hair is not a big deal. Meaning that right. you, you're still beautiful, regardless. Absolutely. But you have to take control. And you got to realize that you know you got choices. You know you don't have to look like everybody else. How about that? Right. Right. And and it's so like I said, it's so crazy until I came into the movement. I it was almost like when I like I said, I was faded before I was being famous. And so when I first cut my hair off, the first thing you always get or are, are you a dyke? Or you know, that yes, you get that stereotype. Oh, she must be gay or she's going through something. It's either you're gay, you can't you got cancer, or you going through a midlife crisis. I don't have any of those. Mm. I love me for me. And it didn't take hair for me to get to this this level of love. I had all this hair for 30 some years and I didn't feel the love that I feel for myself that I feel now, if that makes any sense. Yeah, let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. What do you think, how, how did you get to that place? I mean, it sounds like something took place on the inside of you to realize that you're beautiful without the hair. I mean, talk to us about, I mean, what do you think took place with you? It's so funny because it's it's crazy that this pack of tea helped me to start a personal development within myself. Okay, that's, that's, that's that detox tea, right? Yes, I okay. ate so detox tea. And it's so crazy because a lot of people you have to ask yourself, when's the last time you sat down and actually did some personal development? I pray, I've meditated, but to personally deep down and develop yourself, you'll go through some stuff. I went through a divorce and I thought, you know, that was love and I had kids and I have that particular love, but I didn't realize it's different and it's unconditional when you can love yourself by yourself. Yes. So once I got to manifesting and evaluating my life and the things yes. in it, that's what triggered me want to dig deep into find that there's a love in me that nobody can take. So once I detox, it's like I cried out every burden, every pain, every stress. And when I got in that mirror, it was like the hair was the last thing that I needed to take off to Mm -hmm. uncover that layer and when I say the love that I have for myself is bigger than anything I I literally they they laugh at me today because I had my hat on I walked into work and I even with a bald head I feel like a million dollars you can't tell me I'm not a million dollars you can't tell me nothing different (laughs) hair no hair I don't care (laughs) yes oh that that's that's amazing and that is so um powerful for you to say that now what would you say to um, a woman right now that um, is in fear of letting their hair go, whether it's um, by choice or not by choice. What would you say to that woman who's just dealing with this whole hair loss or just hair? I think it's a, 
I mean, when you think about society and the video games, I mean, not the videos, but the uh, videos and the, the social media and all that, everything that's portrayed and put in front of us, it's all about the long hair. Because I'm a hair stylist and I get it, the weeds and all that. But to get to a point to where you can look yourself in the mirror, whether it's by choice or not, and you make a decision to accept what you see, that's on a whole nother level. So I didn't forgot the question that I asked you. I would say to a fellow woman that is struggling, and I see I see some women say talk about it in the Baldy movement. I would say to my sister, to my queen, to my fellow Baldy, in time, when you're ready, please let it go. Mm. You don't understand how you could be helping somebody else who's watching. Mm -hmm. I get people all the time. It's nosy people everywhere you go. Did you say nosy people? Knows the people everywhere they go because they're watching you. Exactly. And I'm sure a lot of people wonder what the hell was I thinking when I shaved my head off. But mm -hmm. I get so many messages from people saying, I wish I could do what you're doing. And you can't. Oh, that looks good on you. It'll look even better on you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes letting go, you're worried more of what the next person will think. Stop worrying about what somebody else thinks of you. And it all that matters is what you think of. Girl, I know that's right. And I, I think it goes, yeah, and I think it goes a little bit further if you're if you're a woman that um, depends on your your upbringing, what type mm -hmm. of people are in your life, um, if you're um, if you're not part of a true sisterhood, I mean, if you're broken, if you're wounded, I mean, if you got all that kind of stuff going on in your life, sometimes it's hard for you to see through the clouds, I'll say, the clouds. Right. Of, of, of what's going on to realize that there is a beautiful um, butterfly on the other Absolutely. side, you know? Absolutely. And once we realize that, girl, they go, baby, tell you nothing. Bro. <laughs> and, and look, and once you tell me nothing. And look, once you um, figure out how you can accessorize with everything, glasses too, just all of that. I mean, I live for a good pair of glasses. Bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have a um, two girlfriends that sell some amazing um, glasses. You can get all kinds of styles. Um, mm -hmm. um, I wear um, Addict and then L, 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 what's my other girlfriends? L Vision. Yeah, okay. L Vision. Those two young ladies, um, Natia Powell and um, um, what's my other girlfriend's name? Ooh, Crystal, excuse me, excuse me, Crystal. Those two ladies, Crystal Nixon. I'll get some glasses. Go get you some glasses so you can accessorize and look good. Yeah. Okay. So you can look good. But um, what else am I gonna ask you? So it sounds like you did a couple of things. You went through your journey, you got to a point to where you were like, I'm gonna cut my hair. After you cut your hair, you felt more empowered. You realized that you were beautiful anyway and that you had choices. And then you took it a step further. You wanted, um, you went through some personal development. You know, mm -hmm. um, you started detoxing, and it sounds like you just kind of went through a whole um, metamorphosis. Uh -oh. That's it. She woke up, came back, ball, and fabulous sense. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. And you know that is so good to hear. I mean, person, like you said, personal development is everything. Absolutely. And I don't think um, a lot of us realize. How it can change um, our our lives. I mean, it's just like Absolutely. it says personal development. Just like we have a personal relationship with God, personal Absolutely. development is for us. It's for Absolutely. us, for us to look in the mirror, for us to dig deep, for us to get healed. You know, from things that's happened in our past, for us to learn how to forgive, for mm -hmm. us to realize that um, we can be loved, that we are loved, especially women that are bald. You know, we deal with this. Um, persona that nobody will be attracted to us. A man would, won't be attracted to us. I, I thought that at one Let time. Let me let you in on a little secret. Okay, let's talk about it. <laughs> I've gotten more attention since I've been bald than I ever had with hair. Me too. From men. Me too. And I, it, it kind of had me to be taken back. And when it first started happening, I was like, Okay, maybe they have some kind of weird fetish or something. <laughs> Cause I can't, I didn't get this much attention when I had hair. Okay. 
And it got to the point that some people don't see the hair. They see your beauty. And the less hair you have, the more face you see. Your, your structure shows out more. The, the level of attention that is brought to your face because there is no hair there. True. It puts you in a room. You could be in a room with a, a, a room full of women with all kinds of hair. The bald head is gonna, gonna attract. It's gonna get the attention. It's, right. I, I walk into the barber shop with no hair. I bet they wonder what she doing here. And I normally get a um, razor shave because I like the clean finish, and I'll be doing mm -hmm. that tomorrow. But I, I left this out for you guys. Um, and I always get a little message from my barber. He's like, you got them in here going crazy. I said, for what? <laughs> <laughs> so women, please understand, baby. They love them some bald heads. Don't get it twisted. Do yes, they not. do. <laughs> they do. And you know, one, another reason I think that um, men are attracted to bald women is because they realize that you have to be confident to walk around Absolutely. bald. Absolutely. There's a different level, different level of confidence that takes place. And uh, if I walk out of a room, the first thing I tell them, you better get your ball head free. Ah, okay. <laughs> you better Add get your ball head free. And I know you know this little saying that they say um, in the body movement is bald women are for uh, men and not for boys. Absolutely. Secure men. <laughs> Girl, you got to be secure. Got Rock to it be. and to roll with a bald woman. I've had a guy even tell me, uh, so are you, if we ever get serious, will you grow your hair back? Uh, no, so I don't think we're going to get serious. Because <laughs> I'm think, not growing no hair back. Well, do you think he wanted you to grow it back? I'm not sure, but I didn't care. So, I mean, you, if you met me this way and you accept me this way, if I decide in my, my far future that I want to, then that's a different story. But don't think you're going to get in and, oh, I'll love you till your hair comes back. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I know that's, that's right. all right. I got a couple of fellas that love it all. <laughs> I, I know that's the truth. Wow, this is this is amazing. You know, I got to do a little commercial break real quick because we've got to wrap up. Have you had a chance to get our um, magazine? Have you seen it? You've seen it online, right? I've seen it online. Oh, yes. yes. This is volume one. And I want to encourage everybody um to get this magazine and the reason why i um i say that is because we're changing the game i mean this is history Absolutely. there's not another magazine on the market like ours men women and children from all over the world different ethnic groups that are sharing their stories and this magazine is just simply amazing and i can imagine as a child or even another woman to be able to pick up a magazine and see somebody that's bald. I mean, how often do you pick up a magazine? I mean, you may see every now and then, but to have every single person in here bald? I mean, come on. I love it. Changing the game. And this is volume one. And volume two is coming oh, out yeah. in January. I just made a post on that. And so I'm just excited. And I encourage everybody to go to baldlifemagazine.com and purchase this issue and i have to say the picture that i posted on my birthday was totally inspired by you Aww. and i think i saw it in in the body movement and i posted i was like sis do you mind if i steal this idea <laughs> that's that's an honor that's an honor i don't i don't take that uh i don't take that lightly at it's all beautiful photo beautiful lady. I, I, like I said, I've been watching your journey. I'm like, oh my God, this lady is beautiful. I'm so glad that I came across the body movement because I see women of all, all colors walk with confidence. And then you still have some who are forced, uh, that are kind of scared coming out, but to see you ladies pride it to mm -hmm. the point that you have, I'm a person who I'm again, I'm by choice to be bald. But baby, y'all works it. Y'all works it out and I love it. Wow. That is so nice of you. And I just, I just appreciate you, you know, standing with us and alongside of us. And um, because some women don't know how to do that. They don't know how to do that. So thank you so much. Now, do you have any other closing 
words that you would like to share? Anything on your heart that you would like to share with our listeners? To my sister that's hiding under that hair, let it go. Hmm. You'll feel so much better. You'll feel such free. If you're scared, I I can say I was one who was also scared before I even decided to cut it all off. Because at the time, I'm wondering, I always wondered after I did, did shave it off, who would accept me? As long as you accept you and baby, I, when I say I did accept me, I went in that bathroom, did me a couple of photos, and yes, <laughs> I'm I love not it. looking back. <laughs> that is awesome. And you know, to add to what you're saying, to anybody that may um, come across our video later, I want all, everybody, if you're dealing with hair loss, I want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone and you don't have to walk this journey by yourself. There are thousands, millions of women that can walk alongside you. You just have to reach out to someone and let them know what you're dealing with. And especially with this quarantine going on, um, a lot of women are dealing with depression and just dealing with a lot of stuff. And if your hair is falling out and you feel like you're the only person on the planet, just like I did, you're not. Mm -mm. There's a lot of women that will, that will embrace you and that will support you yes yes we love it we got plenty of bald headed friends get you one (laughs) get you one i love it yes get you one so sis thank you so much thank you for for the opportunity you are more more than welcome i don't take it lightly when people share their stories um, on my platform um i look at it um, as a responsibility for me um, this is what I've been called to do. One of the things I've been called to do. And so I don't take it lightly for you to share a part of your journey and a part of your life with yeah. myself and with uh, my listeners. So thank you so much, sis. And I want to thank everybody who joined us on tonight. Please go to our website, Ball Life Magazine, and purchase purchase a copy. That's going to allow us to continue to do what we do. We're going to be coming out with some t-shirts and all kinds of stuff. So please support us so we can continue um, with the healing. That's what this show is all about Absolutely. at the end of the day. It's about healing. Healing and letting somebody know that they're not alone. So thank you guys for joining us. And sis, we'll be seeing each other around Facebook land, I'm sure. Absolutely. So you have a good night. And I just want to say goodbye to everybody. So you guys have a good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>